I'm going to go back. I want to find out a little bit more about you. Um, and I want the listeners to also have a better understanding of who this man is who just opened up this episode with so much of himself. Whoa. Where were you born? And and what you call home? Like, what's the roots? Share a little bit uh-huh. of that with us. Um, I was born in Guatemala in Central America, a uh, land of the feathered serpent bird of the Mayan people. And... Uh, I had to leave on the day of my 11th birthday. I became a refugee because of the political war and the unrest. And, uh, you know, my whole life changed at the age of 11. I ended up going to six elementary schools in five different countries. Wow. And um, I never really felt home anywhere. Even when I would go back to visit, I felt so out of place because I had missed my formative years. Mm. I mean, I had my formative years, but like your teenage years, you really start to develop. You know, I missed a lot, a lot of my culture during that time. And so now I would say home is where my peace is. Mm. And thankfully, I've been able to find peace in many places. Ah, That's Um, awesome. I would say initially, the most peaceful times I had in my life was in Bogwax, St. Catherine in Jamaica. Uh, an indigenous territory, a health suck territory in a community known as Bella Bella in northern BC. Yeah, the Mayan pyramids in Tikal in Guatemala. What was it about those places that brought you that peace? Great question, man. I'm really loving this podcast already. <laughs> you know, what it was about those places is that I felt like I was in the zone. I went to Jamaica for an exchange program. Mm. And I had all these privileged white kids from Canada in the program with me that that the Jamaicans couldn't stand, that I couldn't stand. And, <laughs> and I felt more at home with the Jamaicans than I did with the Canadians, you know, yeah. and uh, Bella Bella. And I was fresh off a of heartbreak from one of those two situationships I mentioned earlier. Mm. And I was feeling so devastated and so worthless. And my brother, Saul Brown, loved his dude. He just took me out to the water, you know, this ancestral water. It's a 15,000-year-old territory. Oh, wow. They call it a bath. So you go in, it's ice cold and there's cedar and you kind of like whip yourself with the cedar to shake off all the bad energy and all the pain and all the agony. And it was a very transformative moment, man. I can honestly say I started to pick myself up at that point. And the pyramids in Tikal is just, you're looking at a, at a rainforest from above it. You go up wooden stairs for what feels like an eternity and when you get to the top of the pyramid there's nothing but the top of trees all around you for as oh, far wow. as your eye can see it's the most majestic sight ever and so those memories were like a decade apart and then five years apart and that last trip to bella bella where i started to kind of find the healing i started to realize home needs to be where my peace is and i need to manifest that peace wherever i go 